I'm SP from the GuineaGeek.com show, a weekly geek news podcast that is part of the GuineaGeek.com network. Just like the show you're checking out now, shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other amazing geek shows at GuineaGeekNetwork.com. This episode of the Intellectual Podcast is brought to you by NextGen Automotive. Visit NextGenAutomotive.com to find the most amazing face mask that you can wear during the pandemic. We here at The Intellectual use these masks ourselves and we can't recommend them highly enough. They're incredibly comfortable, very easy to clean, and they come with HEPA filters that are replaceable. They're easy to speak through and you can do your part to protect those around you with a face mask from NextGenAutomotive.com. Talk hard and enjoy the mindgasm. The Intellectual Podcast starts now. And we are live. Hi, I'm David S. Dawson. This is the Intellectual Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We're going to jump straight into our interview because I know it's a Friday afternoon. I know all of you want to get out there and do nothing in pandemic but it's Friday, so let's not uh, delay from getting into things. I'm going to bring in my uh, my esteemed co-host, Mr. Stephen Schwartz. How you doing, Steve? I'm looking for my esteem. <laughs> it's always missing. You yes. and your esteem. <laughs> my esteem is somewhere else. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. You're doing, doing great? great? Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, hopefully, uh, week it's as expected. So, <laughs> hopefully, technology holds up for us today. Uh, I know we were having a little bit of trouble in the pre-show uh, with our yeah. guest, um, but uh, if he if he if he di- dips out, we'll just bring him back on as many times as mm-hmm. we need to to get through the interview. Uh, I'm really really pleased to introduce uh, my friend uh, of 13 years and our guest today, Mr. Michael Matteo Rossi. And uh, is he there? Can we see him? I don't see him. Come on. I see black. He froze like right as I brought him on. (laughs) He's coming back in. Uh, Let me remove this one. And we'll bring him up. Here he comes. Michael. Hey, there he is. Hello. (laughs) Hey, sorry. Right. Perfect timing. Right we may have to off. do this interview in like five minute chunks or something. I, <laughs> I couldn't hear like I saw your, your thing moving. We'll, we'll go with this. What did you say again, Dave? I'm sorry. <laughs> I said we may have to do this interview in five minute chunks. <laughs> Still can't hear us. <laughs> so I, I can't even hear you right now. I can't even <laughs> hear you. I see you moving. I can't even hear you. Are you wearing? Yep. Do you have headphones now, or? You have headphones. I, I can hear you, Steve. You can hear Steve, right. but you can't hear me. So, know, Steve, right? you're going to you're gonna I you're gonna interview you. Mike. Okay, Dave. we're gonna do this like telephone. So, Dave is gonna speak, then I'm going to relay it. Okay. All right. I can hear you. I don't know. Yes. How you doing? Good to be here. I'm doing great. I'll I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna, gonna turn myself so I'm I'm facing you <laughs> in the yeah. screen. So, how I'm you so, doing? I'm sorry, about I'm good. I'm good. I'm hanging there. Uh, thank you. It's it's nice to be on here and about you for a very long time. I've known Dave for, for God. and we lost everybody. Now. We lost him yeah. again. We lost him again. I think we may have to uh, try this interview again at a different time because we can't keep Michael on. I don't know if it's an internet issue on his side. Or what? Um, let's try bringing him on one more time. Let's see if this time is is stable. If it's not, uh, then we will try and reschedule this interview when we can do it right. Okay. Michael. Yeah, I just can you hear me? In. Yeah, <laughs> I can uh, hear you now. Yes. yes <laughs> okay. If if you get Except kicked out again, that. if you get kicked out again, we're going to reschedule yes. this. Uh, Cause I don't want to, I don't want to take away okay. from your, your interview. If it's a technical problem right. getting you in and in and in and in. So um, you, right. you are on the show today Fingers because, crossed. because you just finished uh, your sixth feature film. You want to tell us a little bit really? about that? Yeah. Shadows. Um, absolutely. Uh, 
it was a film that we, that we shot actually all things considered good timing we we finished in like mid late november uh it's an action thriller and um i directed wrote and was the main producer on it and um we just finished post probably a couple weeks ago dave obviously you were you were a big part of it really helping with with the sound um and so we also dropped the trailer about a, a week week and a half ago so i'm pretty pretty excited about it um we're getting we're getting hit up by some distributors and sales agents already so it's it's pretty exciting that's fantastic news you know? um do we want to try and run the trailer or do we do yeah. we take the risk of losing everything again by trying let's give it a shot shall we okay sure give mm -hmm. Give it a shot. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. You got nothing else better to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Here, here we go. All right. What is this next level shit you're talking about, bro? Open the glove box. Okay. Wow. Oh! So oh my God, it. bro. What the fuck? fuck? You Damn. haven't seen shit yet. You're Jules' kid, aren't you? My name's Cody. What is that? You know what you're doing? Of course I know what I'm doing. What the fuck is that? I am sea salt. You should never have found me. I grew up with kids telling me that my own fucking mother was a fizzed out crack whore. Do you know what that fucking does to a kid? He's making me pay for being a shitty mom. Because I've... I know I've been a shitty mom. Did you notice that he's starting to act a lot more like Bean? Take a look at the table. Does anything look wrong does anything seem off to you check it out homeboy i want you to find everything you can about the buyer who he is where he is what he looks like what crew he's with if he flipped my product oh. you got there. <laughs> don't want any trouble please don't shoot us man please hey, Come with no. <laughs> if they figure out how to create it then they could control the market numbers. That cannot happen. I'm sure you want Dean to go. Jesus fucking Christ, man. What are you expecting to go down? Oh my goodness, we lost him again. <laughs> yes. Got him back, and then we lost him. <laughs> well, that's the trailer. Uh, trailer looks great. The movie looks great. Let's bring him back in here. Yay! There he is. Hi, Mike. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> now, when watching that trailer, I'm just curious. It was really, really staticky, and and like pausing every second. Did it look clear to you guys? I think it, that has. I think that has more to do with your internet connection. I think yeah. your internet Hello? connection today is back. It looked clear. Ours was guys. clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was you're clean. watching it clean. And I'm watching the Facebook okay. stream over here. Then on, it's my uh, damn phone. phone. I mean, I got I got an <laughs> iPhone 7. I don't know, maybe that has to do with it or just up in the hills, but um but I guess we'll we'll try it. We'll keep Yeah, it must it. be really it's tough living up. in the hills. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, right? Well, with this static shit, it's yeah. seen the trailer yet, but uh but as long as people saw it or people saw it streaming and it was clean and clear, that's all yeah. I care about. <laughs> yeah, it looked great. I was okay, watching the cool. Facebook stream cool. over here, and uh, we've gotten a couple of yeah, couple of notices from people saying it looked great. So you finished it, or it's done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So why mm -hmm. don't you tell us a little bit about Shadows, Mike? Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna cool. put you full screen and let you talk. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty proud of it. I um, I I think that. You know, the original trailer was actually supposed to be a little over two minutes. And um, I thought that it spoiled just a little bit too much. So I told the editor to cut it down a little bit because sometimes I find that a lot of these trailers now, you're basically given the whole damn story away. You're given like, you know, all of that. And I wanted it to almost be more of a teaser trailer than just a huge expose, just telling everything about the film. Well, uh 
I don't want you to give too much away, but uh, I've got like weird sun lines going and on. Dave on me. again is I, is I can't hear him. Steve, tell him I would like him to uh, oh, man. without giving too much away. Yeah, D- uh, Dave, I can't hear talk you. about the movie, what it's about, what motivated telling this story. Okay, so we're going to be doing a little bit of telephone here. So he's telling me what to ask you. So he wants to know, without giving too much away, without too many spoilers, uh, what is the film about? And what was your inspiration for doing it? Um, Sure. The the film is basically, it's about Cody, who's a young 18-year-old kid who's just getting into low-level drug deal, all of that, and his mom, who is a prostitute, basically comes back into his life. She left him as, as a baby and is trying to rekindle a relationship there. And in kind of an act of, of coincidence, of fate, of everything, Cody gets caught up in some really bad drug shit that pulls his uncle that he's never seen along. And then his uncle and his mom basically have to protect him from this big drug dealer who put a hit on Cody and it's just, it's the cycle, everything's connected. And um, I just, you know, I, I wanted to tell a very engaging character driven piece. I wanted to tell a, a story that, you know, about family, about retribution, about forgiveness, um, also with entertainment, like guns and drugs and all that crazy shit. So, uh, so that's kind of where I was going with the film. Great. I'm going to be texting with Dave back and forth with his questions. Okay, um, sure. I'm sorry about this. I blame my Oh, no, no, no. It has nothing to do, you know, I think it's somewhat what we realize that if there's more than two people on the screen, then um, we lose a lot of bandwidth. So uh, especially this is a maybe a problem with older phones. Yeah, I mean, I guess seven is what a few years old, but probably you're right. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we're on eleven now or excess. That, so, um, that's, that's, yeah, you're I'm a little behind. You're just just a slight, just a little bit behind. Just, um, just our bit. co-host uh, Whitney Wegman, she had the exact same problem with her phone. Okay. Uh, she had had a much. She had a five, so um, okay. that was even worse. So. That was even worse. She thought it was cute because it was little, but um, you know, it just didn't have the strength to keep up with us. But with that on the do you need is it is it better for me to do it this way or this way? Um the, the other way was visually way? visually, um we prefer the, the wide angle, but um we're okay. getting you that's fine yeah, if you no, just tilt fine. up a little bit, get the top of your head, that's fine. Okay. Perfect. perfect. All right. Perfect. Oh, even better. We can do a yeah. uh, side by side screen so it, it looks a lot better. Uh, l- the landscape is much better. Yes. So. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, so, David, so, yeah, uh, you were saying, you know, Dave, yeah. Uh, David, do you want? Do you have another question you want to feed me, or just waiting for that? So we're we're just going to vamp here a little bit. Um, as as far as uh. How, your, some of your actors, one of the uh, people that uh, I've noticed, I guess the Kingpin, looked rather familiar. And who is that? Vernon, David saying is Vernon sorry, Wells. Hey, Steve, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry, now I'm cutting sorry, out. You were saying one of the actors. The yeah, actors who. A, a little bit, but sorry. Uh, Vernon Wells, the gentleman the actors, who is. Yeah. Um, uh, yep. Who's playing the kingpin? Where have we seen him before? He looked very familiar. Oh, I, that's actually not Vernon Wells. That's David Labrava. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Ver- Vernon's also. No, no, no problem. Um, okay. David Labrava uh, was in Sons of Anarchy. He played okay. uh, the character Happy in Sons of Anarchy, and he's also in the Mayans. So, uh, which is going on right now. And the interesting thing is David was actually brought on by Kurt, by Kurt Sutter, the creator of Sons of Anarchy as a consultant because he was in some of those biker gangs. And then they brought him on as an actor and he was in all uh, seven seasons. And then of course he's in Mayans right now. So 
uh, he's he's awesome. He's a very intense actor, but he does a great job. And uh, and even in the trailer, a bunch of the comments were like, "Oh, is that Happy? That's his character, Happy from Sons of Anarchy." So uh, it's it's pretty cool that way that people recognize him. Um, uh, Whitney is uh, our uh, one of our co-hosts. She has a question: Is how did you getting how did you get started as a filmmaker? That's a good question. Um, I started pretty damn young. I started at San Diego State and I just really wanted to kind of just even do some short films. I had some short scripts, but I didn't really know how to get it up and running. And um, I think, Steve, you know him as well. Uh, Josh Bevier, who yes. Dave knows as well. Josh, yes. he's a great guy. I reached out to him. I think it was on MySpace or some crazy shit like that. That's a long time ago. <laughs> This was back in 2006. This was a long time ago. And he really helped um, put everything together and helped me kind of package uh, the, the short film together. And then the second short that I did, I did with Dave, um, I think in the summer of 07, so 13 years ago. And then just kind of built from there, built from there, just graduated in 09 and just came back to LA and um, just kept writing, kept networking kept seeing what I could do and um, kind of never looked back. So it's kind of crazy how long ago that, that feels, but that's, that's where it was from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question as far as like um, with financing uh, all of your projects, that's, I would say one of the biggest uh, obstacles that a lot of filmmakers yeah. have to overcome is financing. Uh, what avenues do you use uh, to finance uh, your projects? So it's interesting, and I know that I've, it's worked for a lot of other filmmakers, but I've actually never used the the kind of Kickstarter, the Indiegogo. I haven't used any of that. I have gotten very lucky. Well, the first feature that I did, I had to finance uh, a lot of it myself. I saved a lot of money, and then I put in. I'm talking, you know, it was lower five figures. But um, and then I just got lucky where people liked my content, and I was able to you know, network and meet some wealthy people that had interest in my script, my story and wanted to invest and finance it. And because they saw that I, I was able to put them out pretty quickly with low overhead. And that's kind of how it is. But yes, that is the most difficult thing, getting the financing, because there's so many talented people out there. And there's so many good stories. And some of them never get to see the light of day because they don't have the budget or they don't have the, 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 the financial means to make it happen, which is the tough thing for indie filmmakers um, and just filmmakers in general. So uh, that's kind of how it works. I've gotten pretty lucky with just some, some uh, wealthy people that didn't mind putting in some, some money. Great. Um, we got another question from Brian. Uh, what did you learn on this production that you didn't already know? It's a good, good question. And hey, Brian, um, I think I think that, you know, you, you learn with each film. And as a director, you really you have to be in total control and confidence in your own work and your ability to say no sometimes to say a DP that wants a shot. And we don't either have time or I don't feel like it's the right thing or certain actors that they want to improv and I'm big on improv but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So you really have to put your foot down and it's not personal, it's business and really remembering your, your vision and why you want to do it and, and just staying true to it because you're going to get the opinions of everybody, but at the end of the day, you're the captain of the ship. So you have to be very assertive and direct in your approach, even if it might uh, be something that, people at first don't feel like oh this makes sense it's your vision at the end of the day so you have to stay true to that and i think that this one i feel i really understood that concept more than the other films excellent so do you write your own material or do you go outside to other other writers or do you do both i i primarily write my own material there have been a couple times where i've directed other people's work and i am open to that i'm open to um checking out scripts but it has to be the style that i like it has to have a certain um kind of edge maybe action thriller suspense 
drama. Um, that's kind of my thing. So am I open to it? Yes. But are the majority of my films that I do also written by me? Yes. Um, but I am open to other people's. It just really depends. I want to thank Whitney for that question. <laughs> by the way. Thank I you. always want to give credit where credit is due. Um, yeah. As far as uh, casting, uh, you said yeah. that you have the your your uh, one character. Uh, what about uh, Vernon Wells? Uh, we touched Ver on him a little bit. Uh, sure. But Vernon. Vernon. How did you awesome get in contact guy. with? How is it working with him? Yeah. Oh, he's he's awesome. Like he's. He doesn't complain about anything. He shows up on time. He does the work. What you say, he takes the direction and he runs with it. He's he's a true veteran, all of that. I mean, I I saw Commando when I was about nine or ten. And, of course, he's like the main guy in Commando, Bennett with Schwarzenegger. And, um, and he's awesome. And the character that he plays, without giving way too much away, he's, he's a real scumbag. He's a real piece of shit. And... It was actually tough finding somebody that was willing to play him because there are very few redeeming qualities about this character, but he was able to humanize the character in a very interesting way. And I actually, I called up his rep. I told him about the, the film, you know, logistics, all of that. And, uh, and then he got back to me or his rep got back to me, said he likes it, you know. And then I remember I had one, one lunch with Ver beforehand i think we went to a mel's or something just to, just to get a vibe of each other and i felt really good about it he's a great guy i can't speak of him well enough i mean there's a um i think i just lost you you just froze up yeah i think he uh i think his internet connection's uh not great today um yeah, he's logging back in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and and call the interview for now. Uh, I want to bring Michael back later uh, when we can get this right, because um, not yeah. I don't I don't all want to want to proceed forward the way this is going. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and shut down this live stream down for now. I'm going to talk with Michael, see if we can figure out the technology, get him back on uh, maybe next week. Uh, on Monday or Friday next week mm -hmm. and uh, and get this done uh, correctly. Uh, Denise, hold on to your question. I see it in the in the chat. Uh, hold on to it for next week when we uh, when we reconvene with Michael, but I want to try and uh, do this right where we don't uh, we don't lose him as much as we've been losing him on this uh, particular stream. This is uh, the way live streaming goes. This is the technology issue. It's not a uh, you know, there's nothing we can do uh, at the moment, um, but we'll work with Michael on getting this uh, sorted out for next week, and we will be back with the Intellectual Podcast. Until then, I'm Dave Dawson. Please subscribe to the Intellectual Podcast. Uh, Steve, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to go My ahead pleasure. and say goodbye to you too. Thank you for Brian and Whitney for their questions. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and like I said, Denise, hold on to your question for next week. Um Thank you guys for joining us. We will bring Michael back uh, hopefully next week and have a, a full interview with him. Uh, if we can't figure out how to get this technology to work, we might try our backup plan uh, for next week uh, and do it through Zoom. It's not as pretty. It's not as nice, but uh, maybe it'll work a little better on his device. Uh, until then, please subscribe to the Intellectual Podcast on uh, all the various uh, platforms that you can get your podcasts on. Make sure that you uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash intellectual network. And you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash intellectual entertainment. Until next time, I'm Dave Dawson. Uh, hey, man, technology, what, what are you going to do? Uh, you do the best you can, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll get, we'll get Michael back, and we'll do this, we'll do this uh, right uh, on a future episode uh, probably next week. Until uh, then, talk to you all later.